Hey guys, welcome back. Today, we're gonna be talking all about teething. Timelines, symptoms, and remedies. <laughs> He's teething right now, so. Okay, so timelines. Typically, the first tooth usually comes in on average around six months of age. That's the average. Now, there are kids who start teething as young as three months old, um, and some that don't start teething until much later. So the, the average is about six to 12 months. I have a chart that I use, it's on my website, and it kind of breaks down the average timeline for each set of teeth. Teeth usually come up in pairs, that's just how they are. It kind of just starts from the middle and works its way out. And so the, the two front and bottom, those are between six to 12 months. And then the next ones out, those are about nine to 13 months. And then 16 to 22 months are the canines. And then the first molars are between 13 to 19 months. And the second molars are 25 to 33 months. So that's the general guideline. Every kid is different and it doesn't mean anything if they're early, late. It typically doesn't have any implications, but if you're really concerned, you can always talk to your pediatrician, but it's usually not an issue. Just remember that teeth do grow like bones. So they don't just all grow at once and just pop out. So if you feel like your baby has symptoms of like they have symptoms for a few days and then it goes away and no teeth come out, doesn't mean they weren't teething. It just means that they're growing in spurts, just like a bone. So they grow a little bit and then they stop. And they grow a little bit and then they stop. And then eventually they come through the surface, but all those other times that they're having these symptoms, it doesn't mean they weren't teething. It just means the teeth didn't erupt from the surface just yet. So let's get into symptoms. The first symptom is drooling. This is a classic symptom of teething. We all know a drooling baby just gnawing on everything. That's another symptom is just chewing and biting on everything. Um, sucking on their fingers, chewing on their fingers, grabbing anything that they see in sight and just always chewing on it. They want something to soothe those gums. They're irritated, they're throbbing, they're painful, they're sore, and they just want something to soothe that irritation. And then obviously, Another symptom is sore, tender gums. So sometimes you can touch it and it just they, they just kind of react and they're just really sore and tender. That's really common. But typically sore and tender gums will be a symptom more so when the teeth are erupting through the surface. Not as much when they're te sorry. Not as much when they're teething growth spurts without the teeth erupting through the surface. But when the teeth are actually erupting from the gums, that's when you have some other symptoms like sore tender gums and red inflamed bumpy gums. Being fussy and irritable is another symptom, unfortunately. So they have a lot of things going on, they're in pain, they don't feel well, they're irritable, they're tired, they're fussy, all these things. So another symptom could be a low grade fever. The body's response to teething sometimes does trigger a fever. If they have a fever and they have symptom, they don't have any other symptoms of infection or anything like that, but they are teething, it's common for teething to be associated with a low grade fever. It's good to just be aware that that might be the cause of things. So we've covered timelines, we've covered symptoms. Let's get into remedies. This is the tough part because to be completely honest, there are really no remedies. <laughs> Unfortunately, the teeth have to grow, the teeth have to erupt, and there's nothing you can do that's gonna make that a completely seamless painless situation. There's just nothing you can do. So what I focus on is how can I make them more comfortable? How can I soothe you know, their symptoms? How can I make them feel less pain? And another thing is all kids teeth differently. So there is not one size fits all. There is not one thing that works for everybody. Every kid is different and every kid responds differently to each 
remedy. So I listed as many as I can that I know work for some so that there's a wide range that you can choose from or go down the list and try with your baby so that you can find what works best for you. So Hi! <laughs> this is my teething boy right now. He's looking at all these teething toys I have. Can you say hi? Hello. Hi. Oh yeah? Say hi. Yeah, say I'm teething. Again. That's another thing, oh my gosh. When they're teething for a while, you feel like you want to pull your hair out, and then finally the tooth comes out, you're so relieved. You're so relieved, and you're like, oh, finally, that's over. And then like two seconds later, more teeth come, and then more teeth come, and then more teeth. It's literally like... Oh, yeah? Literally for like the first two years, so... That's why it's so important to understand the signs and symptoms, to understand what works for your little one, and just get ready. <laughs> because it can be rough if you don't know how to handle it properly. So it is a learning process. You gotta learn your kid. I mean, I've had two so far and they're both pretty different. So, you know, every kid is different and you gotta just kind of figure out what works. But hopefully these tips will help figure that out for you. <laughs> Where were we? Okay, remedies. So I have a blog and did my whole post about teething. It even has like this free downloadable chart that I made, just like a quick reference guide that's really helpful to have. You don't have to go searching for it every time. You just have one cute sheet that's easy with simple information on there. So you can go there and download it for free if you want. Uh, I'll link it below, but I'm just referencing this blog post because I have all the information on there. So the first remedy is rubbing their gums just to make sure it's clean and you're not like introducing germs and bacteria into their mouth directly. Either wash your hands right before or use a glove or use a piece of gauze or something like that and just kind of rub their gums a little bit. If they're not super tender, like a tooth is not like literally about to come through the surface, then this will relieve the soreness on their gums. So just gently kind of rubbing the gums, just kind of soothing them and almost like massaging them. It can help sometimes with the soreness. Next is hard foods. So, depending on the age that your little one is teething at, obviously, check with your pediatrician or do whatever you feel is right, but whatever your child is ready for food-wise can be really helpful in the teething process. Certain foods that are hard and obviously aren't a choking hazard, but something they can gnaw on that will soothe their gums, has some flavor, and can also serve as like a little snack for them, they'll be so happy. So I have a few favorites. One is apples. So I slice off a piece of apple and I just give it to him and he sits there and he gnaws on it forever. So he loves apples and they last a really long time. And actually apples are good for your teeth. They have like a certain enzyme in them that help clean your teeth. So that's awesome. Apples are just a really good one for chewing on. And also graham crackers. So just be careful of this. If, you're, if your child is under one year old, they're not supposed to have any kind of honey. So don't give them any honey. I tried to find graham crackers that weren't honey graham crackers and I couldn't find them anywhere. I'm sure they exist. I didn't try that hard, but everywhere I looked, they were all honey graham crackers. So I didn't use this until my son was over one year old, but he loves graham crackers. And we, we did saltine crackers too, but those are a little more like sharp. So the graham crackers were a really good one because they're much more soft and crumbly, but they're still hard enough to soothe their gums. He's back. <laughs> but they're still hard enough to soothe their gums when they're chewing on them. Also, Cheerios, Puffs, those little, you know, little snacks like that are just good to keep them occupied, eating, and they're they're chewing them with their little gums, and those can be helpful too. They don't last as long, but they are good, quick, simple options too. One of my favorites are the teething wafers. So teething wafers are great. 
They're literally designed for teething, so that's amazing. They work great. They dissolve really quickly, so they're not a choking hazard. I mean, they are more expensive. Anytime you buy something that is specific to, you know, specifically made for something, it's gonna be a little more expensive rather than just using a graham cracker or, you know, just like Puffs versus Cheerios. So Puffs dissolve a little quicker, but they're like, specifically designed for kids of that age. Cheerios, pretty much the same thing, but they don't quite dissolve as quick. So you're gonna pay a lot more for puffs than you are for Cheerios, just like you're gonna pay a lot more for the teething wafers than you are for graham crackers. So graham crackers and apples are quick, easy, cheap. Teething wafers though, I love that they come in the little individual packs and you can literally just pile those in your purse, bring them anywhere. And for me, my kids both loved them and Anytime I busted one of those out, if I was like in a pinch or they were getting fussy and I was out shopping or you know somewhere in public and I just wanted them to calm down, I would literally just bust one of those out and give it to them and they would be just content and happy for a while. Okay, next remedy is cooling them down. So when the, when the gums are inflamed and sore and irritated, they could be warm and it feels really nice for them if they have something cold to soothe those gums. So something cold, there are some toys that you have, like this one for instance. These are great. They have like this texture on it, so they're a little rough. So if they're chewing on it, it'll soothe their gums. It'll be nice for them to chew on, but it's filled with water and it's kind of, it's like soft plastic. So you can pop this in the freezer and it'll be nice and cold for them. And when they chew on it, it's pretty soothing. Or you can take a washcloth and dip it in some water and throw it in the fridge or throw it in the freezer. The thing you wanna look out for with throwing anything in the freezer, especially something that's not made for the freezer, like a washcloth, would be the fact that it might stick to their tongue or lip when it's frozen. So if you give them, like, for example, if you gave them an ice cube and they licked it, it would probably stick to their tongue initially until it, you know, melted a little bit. So there is the risk of injury. So just be careful of that, not to let it get too frozen and frosty to where if they bite it, it's gonna stick. So also when it's completely frozen solid, it's really not gonna be that soothing. It's gonna be hard as a brick. So what I like to do is put it in the fridge, or if you don't have a lot of time, throw it in the freezer for like five or 10 minutes and it'll be cold, but still soft. So a washcloth has like that texture. I was just doing this for him, so I have it right here. So like a washcloth, has you know that rough texture. Popping this in the fridge for a bit so it's nice and chilly and then kind of letting them just hold it and and chew on it. So they like to kind of suck the water out and just feel the, you know, like rub the texture of the washcloth on their gums. And it's cold, so it's gonna soothe their gums as well. So that's a good one. Another one I've done before, which can be a little bit messy, but it actually is, works pretty good, is taking some applesauce and rubbing it on the inside of the washcloth and then rolling it up, kind of like a little burrito, and then freezing, like almost freezing it. So put it in the freezer for a little while, get it a little bit stiff, but not really, still able to move it, and then let them kind of gnaw on it. And they'll be sucking on it, and a little bit of the applesauce will come in, it'll be sweet and they'll be excited, and then it's kind of like a little treat, distraction, and they get all the benefits of the texture of the washcloth, the coldness of it, and all that other stuff. So that's a good tip too. What's next? Milk, okay. Another method for cooling down the gums would be to make breast milk popsicles. So if you're breastfeeding, you have extra breast milk. If you freeze it into little popsicles, if you have like a little, you have like a little mold or something that you can pour it in and make popsicles with, then those are great for letting them suck on it because then, that, especially if, you're not introducing solid foods yet, or they're not quite ready for chewing and swallowing um, crunchier food, you're a little nervous to start that, then breast milk popsicles are great because it's breast milk, they're gonna love it, they feel comfort from that because they're used to it, and it's a popsicle, so it's gonna be really soothing on their gums too. Oh, hi, he's chewing on an apple right now. Are you chewing on an apple right now? I always want my phone. Okay, so next up is teething toys. So teething toys, like I said, anything. Um, this one, like I showed earlier, was is a good one. I have another one that's like this, <laughs> where I've learned that these plastic little pieces on the end that they can chew on that are like 
rubbery, but they're really firm. They have texture on it. And then this thing kind of makes noise. And then this thing squeaks. So it kind of has a lot of things going on to distract them. So, oh, you like that? You like that? Oh, you want to chew on it? <laughs> okay. So what I've learned is multi-purpose items. Things are going to distract them that they can chew on, but will also distract them from the pain. So the washcloth thing, you know, something like this is great, but it's not going to be distracting them. So this one, they can chew on it and play with it and have like all these different features on there while soothing the gums. I also have this one, which is similar to the little hand because these are like little keys. This this is nice because you can, it has like some gel inside of it, so you can freeze these, but they're also like a little key set that they can play with and that will be distracting for them, so that's good. I have one of these, it's kind of like a toothbrush, but it's just this on the outside and they can just sit there and chew on that, which is good. Oh, you like that one? This is a silicone one that they just hold and it's pretty bendy, but it's like these little beads, you know, that they can just chew on. And then this one, so this one, probably my favorite. I have another one, the raspberry, uh, it's like a pacifier, but it's really textured. It's kind of like this texture on it. So it's like a pacifier, they can literally hold it and just gnaw on it. And that one's a really good one. I don't know where it is. It's lost in the abyss somewhere around here. But I'll, I love that one. I'll put a little picture right here. What are you doing? You are so silly. This one. This is the munch mitt. Niblet? This is niblet. I think this is the munch mitt. I don't know if it's an off brand or what. I'll have to find out. But this is pretty much a little mitten. Okay, let's put this on your hand. Ooh. That's cool. And then we'll, there we go. Wow. <laughs> This one's really nice because it literally tie, like wraps onto their hand and it stays on and it has this like texture on the end of it, this silicone texture, and it's a little crinkly so it's kind of fun for them and they can just sit there and go to town. It's per well, oh. Okay, but he'll still chew it, it's fine. Um, I didn't put it on there that, that well. Cheese. <laughs> Cheese. Next up is medication, so. I, I'm a nurse and I'm, I'm all about medication if you need it. However, I try to avoid it at all costs, especially with my little babies. If they don't need it, obviously I'm not going to give it to them. If they're super fussy and just, you can tell they're in excruciating pain and nothing that I've tried before this is working, then I will start going into like, okay, we should probably just give them some Tylenol and make them a little more comfortable because you know, talk with your pediatrician, see what they recommend. Hiya. And they'll usually say it's totally fine to give Tylenol or ibuprofen, or it's like super severe, you can alternate between the two. It depends, but I try to avoid it at all costs if I can, but if they're really, really in pain and nothing seems to be helping, I'll, I'll just give them some Tylenol. But what I did get is these Camilla drops. Is that what it's called? Camellia, Camellia homeopathic medicine. These are for painful gums and irritability, teething relief, natural active ingredients. Comes in a packs like this and there's several inside of each one. And they're little vials, gripe water and this I think are pretty similar, but this is like just homeopathic remedies for teething relief that I think works actually. I always try this option first before resorting to medication. So I try my little methods of giving them, you know, snacks, toys, soothing their gums, doing whatever I can to make them feel comfortable. If none of that works, I'll give them some of these. And then if they're still in really excruciating pain, then I'll start with Tylenol and see how it goes. Usually, that's the thing though, is usually if I give them Tylenol, within seconds, they're totally fine. Like completely fine, 100%. And I'm like, gosh, I should have done this from the start. But I don't want to. I, I just don't want to get in the habit of just automatically giving them Tylenol every time I feel like anything's wrong, because I don't want their bodies to depend on that, and I don't want them getting 
a lot of medication that's not necessary. So I always try to avoid it if I can. Even if it's the easy option, I still try to avoid it. Next, I'm gonna go over a couple of precautions just to keep in the back of your head when you're exhausting all these different options. First thing is to avoid anything that contains benzocaine or lidocaine. So Oragel, things like that, that have benzocaine, lidocaine in it, avoid, just avoid. It's been known to be harmful to young kids and it's just a harsh medication that I feel is just not necessary at this point. Next, I did mention that having a low grade fever is common. So just keep that in mind, but also, <laughs> okay, we're back again and we have a graham cracker. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> So with a fever, just keep it in mind that it's not always because of teething. There could be a situation where your child really honestly has an infection or something like that. And just understand that it's gonna be a low grade fever not associated with other signs and symptoms of infection. So if your kid is having diarrhea, cough, like things like that, and they have a fever over 100, then it's probably not because of teething. So if it's a low grade fever, 100 and under, and they have no other signs and symptoms of infection, just teething, it's probably just because of teething. Now sometimes you can have diarrhea from teething because they're producing so much excess saliva, they're swallowing it and their, their saliva is more acidic, so it's kind of upsetting their stomach and it's causing them to have diarrhea or upset stomach. So that's common too. So it's really tricky. You just have to kind of use your best judgment or ask your pediatrician if you're unsure, but just keep those things in mind. The next precaution is using frozen items. So I kind of already touched on this just to make sure you're not giving them something that's super frozen and frosty that's gonna stick to their tongue or their lips or anything like that. And the last one I kind of already touched on as well, which is just to be cautious when using food items that might break off and become a choking hazard. So just be cautious of that. Hey. Next, caring for the teeth once they come through. So when they only have a couple of teeth and you're like, oh, those are just baby teeth. Who cares? We don't need to brush them. They're gonna fall out and nobody really cares. Wrong. <laughs> so those teeth have roots and they are directly connected to their permanent teeth. Their permanent teeth are already in their mouth. They're just up there. So the roots and everything, if you get rotten teeth and infections and gum disease, all of these horrible things that can happen from not taking care of the baby teeth, that infection and those you know cavities and that decay can travel all the way up the root and affect not only their health, but their other permanent teeth as well. So it's really important to make sure you're caring for those teeth, even at a young age, just start brushing them and getting into that routine right off the bat. So start brushing their teeth and gums with a soft toothbrush at least once or twice a day. That will get them used to the process, that will get them used to you kind of poking around in their mouth, and it'll keep their gums and their teeth clean and healthy. Toothpaste. I've heard of people saying not to use fluoride, use fluoride. I was recommended to use fluoride by our dentist and our pediatrician, so they say just be cautious of the... Hi. 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 <laughs> so just be cautious of the amount of fluoride that they are consuming because kids are not really capable of spitting out their toothpaste and saliva and all that until they're about three years old. So my daughter is three, she literally just started spitting out her toothpaste and all that, so that's good. But until then, you have, to, you have to pretty much understand that whatever amount of fluoride is in the toothpaste and however much toothpaste you put on there, that's how much they're gonna be consuming. So it was recommended to me, fluoride toothpaste the size of a grain of rice until they're two, and then after that, the size of a pea. So consult with your dentist, pediatrician, whatever is best for you guys, but that's what was recommended to me and that's what we've been doing ever since. And when to see a dentist? I always thought it was pretty ridiculous to see a dentist when they have like only a couple teeth. It's like, what are they gonna do? But it's good to get them used to going to the dentist. It's good to get them comfortable there. And it's good to get them, you know, evaluated. They kind of take a look at their teeth, see if whatever you're doing is working for them. If there's anything extra you should be doing. So it's just good to get them in there. They recommend as soon as their first tooth pops up, but to me, I think that's a little bit ridiculous. So they say at least by the first birthday. Oh, another big one. Once they get teeth, you have to be more careful with your milk. Putting them down to sleep with a bottle, it's not recommended in terms of like a sleep crutch anyways, but if you do that, make sure you stop doing that 
by the time they have teeth because that milk will rot their teeth. There's sugar in it. Try to eliminate bottles when they're sleeping, you know, putting them down with a bottle. But if you absolutely have to, switch it out to water. Switch it out to just water. And if they're having a hard time with it, just taper it down. So we used to have like mostly milk and then when they got teeth, we just did half milk, half water, and then quarter milk three quarters water and it just kind of slowly took it away until it was just all water and then we took the water when it's water they're not quite as interested in it anymore and then we were able to just eliminate the bottle so it can be a slow process or you can just cold turkey take it out and see how it goes whatever whatever feels right but make sure they're not going to sleep with milk anymore okay welcome to the world of teething you're gonna be dealing with it for at least two years <laughs> All right, that's it. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Look at my teethers.